It's nice to see we have a lot of uh, can you hear me colleagues joining yeah. us from can you hear me today. Now? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Eric, how's your microphone? Thanks. Excellent. So it's it's nice to see we have a lot of uh, colleagues joining us from Europe. Uh, we have our friends from Greece. I see at least four or five uh, Greek scholars from a Athens, which is nice. So hopefully everybody is doing well during this coronavirus crisis. Everybody's keeping social distance and staying safe and healthy, which is nice. Um, okay. So let's wait two more minutes and let everyone join. Uh, so in the meantime, I can briefly talk about uh, our CARP lab, which is our uh, experimental platform to investigate and discuss different issues related to the phenomenon of character assassination. So, and it's really symbolic that of character assassination research, which is political psychology, I think it's really important to understand where we start and how we uh, evolve as a lab, as a research center. Now we already have two international conferences in Washington, DC, and we had several European conferences we've been affiliated with, which means that our field is growing, that we get new members. Uh, and we are uh, currently uh, working on several projects so we just finished a handbook of uh, character assassination research and uh, finishing up a textbook, which will be available uh, early next year. And hopefully next year we'll be um, doing a reader, uh, which will um, be kind of trilogy of um, three important um, uh, products um, based on most recent research of the topic. So um, today we will um, basically go back to the roots where we started when uh, several years ago, uh, Dr. Sharaev uh, published his article about character assassination and uh, he was specifically interested how character assassination works in, in, uh, in political contexts. So we know that uh, character assassination as a social phenomenon is always a property of any politicized or competitive environments. And um, Dr. Shirai was trying to um, look at how political psychologists can help our society better understand this phenomenon, character assassination. So, and in his view, uh, political psychologists play the role of mediators between research and political science and psychology, and they also try to uh, not just focus on the attackers or people who try to um, engage in different character assassination campaigns, but also uh, he was looking at various factors, uh, causes and effects. He was looking at uh, victims of those attacks, and he was looking uh, specifically at the impact of these traumatic and stressful events in general, which was very interesting and uh, pretty innovative at that time because um, so before Eric's work, um, there was some random research about character assassination done in different fields, um, whether it's psychology or sociology or communication science. But um, um, his effort was to, in a, in a way, kind of put all this work together and reconceptualize it and start a new line of research, which uh, turned out to be quite successful and needed. And now we see how a lot of colleagues of ours um, joined, uh, joined this research movement. But uh, let me um, open up by saying a few words about uh, Dr. Sharaev. So Dr. Sharaev uh, is a professor at George Mason University and he's a researcher and author of uh, multiple uh, books. Uh, so right now I think it's 20 or 25 books on uh, political psychology, inter international relations, cross-cultural psychology, comparative politics. Um, so, so character assassination became um, his kind of fundamental work. So I shared the link of Eric's website with you where you can take a look at his most recent books. And you can see that um, he's quite prolific and diverse uh, in terms of topics he covers and issues that he investigates. 
So we have international relations, we have uh, current debates in international affairs, we have Russian politics, we have personality theories, we have history of psychology, uh, we have uh, uh, political science of Soviet Union. So in other words, um, I really look forward to our conversation today and um, I think we'll all benefit from uh, Eric's scholarship and his, uh, his insight. So, and I would like to start by um, uh, giving Eric the floor and maybe uh, let him introduce himself in his own words and uh, explain us why uh, the whole issue of character assassination has become so important in, in, the, re in the recent years. Thank you, thank you, Dr. S uh, Sergey, Professor Samolinga. Thank you so much. Uh, I did know that so, I've done so many good, good things. It's just, it's a character boost to me. It's a, it's a, thanks so much. You, you said everything about, about me. Uh, and so, well, certainly uh, the subject of character assassination is, is uh, uh, better known today. Thanks to, for your studies and your research and our, our colleagues as well. But um, essentially this is, uh, this is not about substance character assassination. It's about, it's about image. Uh, no matter what the person does, no matter what the person, doesn't really matter what, what person has done in the, in the past. Uh, an attacker tries to dismiss all good things, all accomplishments, and go to the image of this person. I may, or, or somebody, invent right away a medication against, against the virus, today, tomorrow. Uh, however, a person who attacks a person's character, a doctor's character, will say that it's, uh, the virus was invented uh, because of the ulterior motives. The person wants to make money, when a person wants to dominate the world. So never mind that the, the vaccine is invented, uh, the character of a person who has done uh, has, been, has been questioned. And the, therefore, the goal of, of those who attack characters uh, are quite, quite certain just to, to affect the course of events, to affect history, to affect things that can happen, to affect the positive uh, well, outcomes of, of, of uh, say, uh, discovery, of work, uh, activities, uh, and to, uh, to switch attention to images. That's why it's about emotions. That's why it's about perceptions. And that's why we talk, talk about psychology. So, uh, uh, your favorite case, uh, Senator Gary Hart, we remember. Um, well, we remember history, of course, a long time ago. It's one of the uh, most uh, outspoken, most uh, prepared, most qualified candidates uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, for run uh, and win in presidential elections in the United States. And yet he, uh, well, was attacked for things he has done. Basically, essentially, it's his, his uh, uh, affairs. Uh, definitely his secret affair, definitely he challenged the media uh, to, to catch him, they caught him, and then presented him as a liar. Cheater, liar, unfair person, arrogant person, and he had to resign, resign. Essentially, all his work, all his uh, work in religious, well, in, in a sense, all his work as, as, a, as a good person uh, was simply canceled. Uh, in the eyes of the public, uh, and so he withdrew from from uh, public life for uh, for for many many years. So psychology matters, definitely psychology matters. So uh, uh, if uh, if thank you so uh, much, Eric. Uh, we think uh, about can, um, uh, first of all, that's <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can uh, develop more on uh, your personal interest, how you personally bec became involved, because you've been. Um, doing traditional psychology for many years and then you switch to political psychology and then uh, all of a sudden you develop interest in this new groundbreaking uh, 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 field. So uh, maybe you can just tell us a little bit how you made that switch. There were several people, uh, colleagues of mine, my acquaintances here in the United States who uh, complained to me over the years uh, about um, that's uh, what bothered them is not their accomplishments, not their work, but uh, their image. Uh, though I'm a colleague, my colleagues professors, uh, or my uh, acquaintances who worked uh, in the political arena, uh, there were individuals who would say that's how important it is. It was for for the public uh, to judge them by uh, by the yes by uh, subjective features, by the quality of their character, rather than by 
by the uh, quality of their work. Yes, character matters, we understand, should matter. It's Im important to be good individuals, it's important to be who we are. However, uh, certain weaknesses of ours, uh, missteps, uh, mistakes, can, uh, can, be, uh, can be noticed by others and exploited uh, to achieve a particular goal. And a particular goal is to, to remove us from uh, either competition or diminish the results of our work, be it academic work or a work of the engineer or work of politician. Politician. And just through this, uh, through this uh, uh, negative perception of this individual character, well, well, uh, question uh, the uh, objective results of this person's work. So, Eric, you talk about these attackers. Who are they? I mean, and why are they trying to um, assassinate someone's character? Um, so, what are the motives behind? Well, one thing is obvious. Yes, one thing is obvious. Some people, and in fact, many of us, want to somehow win a competition. It is understandable. Many people win, win, want to win. A fair, square way, we compete, we run, uh, we submit proposals, we're being rejected, we submit our work, uh, and we, we ask people to judge, to judge. But some individuals find that it could be easier for them, instead of uh, talking about the quality of your work, discuss uh, individual individual features, uh, discuss discuss characters. characters. Uh, think about George Washington case, one of the classical cases which I, I particularly like. Uh, that's uh, uh, for back uh, during the years of, of the Revolutionary War here in the United States. Uh, strange letters appeared, uh, just which were attributed to George Washington. He didn't write those letters. Uh, he didn't uh, send these letters. They were fakes, but the letters uh, contain uh, his uh, personal uh, communications with uh, uh, for in English King. In those letters, George Washington alleged uh, writer uh, confess uh, about his regrets about the revolution, confess about his actions, talked about his moral uh, weaknesses, and praised the king. Definitely, these this letters were damaging to George Washington's character. Uh, so. If not on the battlefield, we, as we believe today, the opponents of George Washington, probably it was the British sympathizers, probably it was somebody else. Well, the opponents of George Washington wanted us to make sure that the, the followers of George, General Washington, those people who supported him, the soldiers of the Continental Army, would be disappointed, would be less willing to fight for their, for their commander uh, and the future first president of the United States somehow would affect the moral quality, the strength of a, of a continental army, and essentially, essentially uh, bring uh, uh, the king, uh, well, uh, help king, uh, uh, or the crown to win uh, against, against the colonies. So that, that's what, what's the essence of, of, of psychology. And also these days, of course, you know, there's a, there are practical motives. People want to achieve something by attacking characters, but also today, uh, we forget uh, sometimes that uh, there are so many people who want to do it just for fun, just in spite, what? just for, for the sake of, well, for, for spite, uh, just to damage somebody, poke, uh, pinch, punch. And the year of, uh, of the social networks allows so many people to remain incognito. So it's one of the examples, which is not just the, just the imagination of people that saying, oh yeah, those, those trolls are lurking in the shadows, sitting there punching buttons. And there are trolls that's not lurking in the shadows, sitting in front of the computers, eating their sandwiches, and they, they simply want to uh, do something really bad to people who are either famous or people who just conduct webinar, uh, well, seminar or something online, or just, just individuals because it is, it is available, like bullying quite often. So we know the bullies, bullies act not because they really want to, uh, well, just settle score with someone, simply because they can, they can. It's simply they want to uh, damage as a popular person, popular person. Yeah, they have power. And, and basically, uh, as you point out in your chapter in our handbook, is that basically it's a, it's a power struggle in, in, in many ways. And, you know, these uh, targets are people of some uh, notable uh, public, <laughs> public profile and social standing. Uh, but uh, one thing is actually really interesting to me is that uh, this, who is the audience? Because, I mean, character attacks, they require some receptive audience, right? So, so what's the psychology behind some of people's excitement to explore rumors, accusations, private details? Um, 
why? I mean, who are those people who actually like to hear those things and would explore, um, you know, where, uh, the internet just looking for some some dirt and some your Well, there are there are practical uh, purposes, and for instance, uh, if something matters to me, if something matters to us, we will pay attention to this uh, and and pay attention to subjective features uh, or characters of individuals. Case in point, again, classical case, uh, John Kennedy, JFK, 1960, when he ran for uh, presidency, uh, there were newspaper reports or comments about uh, well, possibilities, maybe in the future, uh, is, if, if he is elected, that he is a Catholic, he would rather report to the Pope in Rome rather than to American people. So uh, America didn't know Catholic presidents before, and now see that they, this is the situation. Uh, the divisions in the United States, religious divisions, were not really huge, but still were substantial. Substantial. And Protestants and Catholics, yes, uh, it was an important factor. And that's innuendo, and, or direct talk about Kennedy being so much in the hands, a puppet in the hands of puppeteer, the Pope in Rome, those talks probably matter to some Protestants or some atheists who would think that, yeah, electing president who is a devout Catholic is not a good idea. Never mind that Kennedy just came with a good, uh, fine social agenda and was a good, good platform on which he ran and eventually won. He won, I understand. So those uh, attacks were not really, really effective. However, he, Kennedy won barely, barely, barely. And who knows, maybe just because of a, uh, not so many people uh, accepted that, uh, not many people believed that uh, he was, uh, as a character, he's so vulnerable, as a Catholic, so vulnerable. And he, he, was, he was elected, he was elected. Many other factors have helped him to win against Nixon that time, but uh, that was, was an effect. So uh, th there's a public interest in something. If I am afraid of something, if I believe that uh, today's virus uh, is a product of a conspiracy of a big pharmaceutical companies, I will pay attention to the characters of Bill Gates and, and presidents and other individuals, what they do, how they do, and certainly will search for, um, yeah, for in echo chambers, the information about, about those, uh, those um, um, uh, those uh, strange things happening in today's world. Lots of people need also confirmation. If I believe that my candidate is a good person, so if I believe that uh, Joe Biden is the man, or I believe that Trump is the man, I will ignore other facts and will definitely stick to, to well, to, to listen to, uh, to what uh, my, my supporters say, and vice versa. Those who hate Trump, uh, those who hate Biden, essentially will look for anything uh, anything that would somehow damage their re reputation, their, uh, their, their character. And uh, you're right, you rightly said, it does not only practical matters, also, um, also excitements of things that are un unknown. A good person, a good family member, a good scientist or a good politician all of a sudden caught in something which we don't know what is there, has it happened or not, but it's exciting, interesting, it becomes headlines. And it's just uh, something new, something new, something not related to virus, <laughs> for instance. And there you go, there you go, it becomes, becomes an issue. And certainly people talk about this and certain reputation is damaged and person's cause for which he or she fights can be also, uh, for, for, at least for some time, forgotten. I also know that psychologists study cognitive biases, right? And you know how some of those cognitive biases are linked to our stereotypes and linked to our um, particular um, heuristics and anchors that work at some point and times of uncertainty, times of an, an anxiety uh, during crisis. Um, do you see any examples right now when, you know, in, in times of this pandemics, you know, people actually look for some, you know, explanation, easy explanations? I think we see, we see it, we see it, uh, uh, Quite some, uh, quite often these days, and I mentioned about uh, conspiracy theories and conspirators behind this, uh, behind the crisis that we, we experience, uh, and motivation behind behind that. So this is not uh, just a, a talk between you and I about about some people. I think I believe there are tens of millions, if no more, uh, of individuals that who uh, really believe that uh, well, the pandemic has been organized by somebody. And there are people with those evil intentions who are uh, done to either to punish 
some nations and maybe things went out of hand, or once again, there's a big conspiracy uh, just to make more money. One of the victims, I believe, I, and I have no idea why it happened, is why, uh, Bill Gates, Bill Gates. Uh, so to the point that uh, in some countries, that, that's uh, like Russia, there was a talk by legal authorities about saying, well, just to stop those conspiracy theories, we will, we will prosecute them for spreading the rumors. But, but millions of people even believe more that that's the, Bill Gates and others uh, in the company are behind, behind some of the... Uh, experiments that, uh, well, resulted in, in pandemics. So they were actually interested in that. It's only microchips yeah. in, in, oh, in, our, yes. in our heads, in our blood system, just to, to trace information. Yeah, so yesterday they so, uh, posted a story about the attacks on scientists, uh, where some people believe that there are scientists behind or conspirators behind this whole pandemic and they're trying to, or some wealthy politicians behind it and it's actually everything's been organized. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I believe, certainly, certainly, and I believe these days uh, uh, country leaders, the governors in the United States in particular, are um, easily blamed for being cowards uh, if, if they don't do um, uh, enough in the minds of some people, uh, or uh, clowns if they say too much and appear in too many, many, many places, uh, greedy misers because they don't spend enough money uh, because, of, well, they make money for, for their colleagues and friends. Uh, or spending, wasting too much money because they don't care about the budget and just simply just wasting resources left, left and right. So whatever the vulnerability is, definitely it will be explored and exploited by, by others in the characters of a political leaders today. So, uh, so, Eric, what about those, some of those uh, targets? Um, you, you briefly mentioned targets of character attacks. Um, so, and you're, you sometimes refer to them as victims. Uh, are some of them more vulnerable than others? Are they more susceptible to attacks than other audiences? Yes, there, there are. Uh, one is from an objective standpoint, that's uh, easily individuals who do nothing uh, are very difficult to attack, so they are, they are not really vulnerable, because if I do nothing, say nothing, mean nothing, produce nothing, uh, uh, I don't exist in the eyes of many people, so that's why they don't find it useful to somehow in, to attack me. So people who do something, produce something, uh, create something are are victims. victims. Uh, psychologically, uh, well, uh, we do have uh, uh, luggage with us, uh, luggage of uh, accomplishments, uh, our biographies, and certainly just just uh, it's commonsensical. The person who is uh, a foreigner, an immigrant, say uh, uh, migrated to France uh, or United States or Canada, yeah, there is a certain aspect of this person's biography that can be exploited by others, by others, right? It's just uh, referring to uh, foreign, uh, foreign roots. Uh, ethnic background, religion, uh, unfortunately, can, religious affiliation can be uh, that uh, context or that feature which uh, can be exploited by, by others, referring to, to, to our uh, ethnic or religious back, background. Uh, family status, just the previous history of things we've done, things we've said, again, unfortunately. Never mind that's a person maybe completely different than, than 10 years ago, but things that happened 10 years ago, uh, uh, for like gambling debts or something like that, maybe, maybe uh, remember. And psychologically too, too, uh, we grew up, especially those who are in the public arena, people in power, in politics, yes, they, they go there because they survive there because they survive. They have a thicker skin. Uh, the eggs thrown in their heads and, and the remarks uh, and uh, slander, they, they survive uh, like uh, icebreakers go forward. But many people, especially in, in, well, in business, I guess, in academic field, in science, uh, we are not that thick skinned. We, we, probably many of us feel injustice, uh, many of us emotionally more vulnerable than people in power in politics because they, by definition, they won the competition. So the evolutionary selected to be there because they survived all, the, all those steps uh, that's led to, to, to their success in, in, in power. And uh, it's our psychological feature. It just, it's something inborn. Uh, we have, some of us are more shy, some of us more sensitive to, to uh, issues. We, have, we, we may be more vulnerable because of a family circumstance, it's a particular subject. And in those cases, character attacks really, 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 really hurtful. hurtful. Uh, they, they penetrate deep, uh, they hurt deep. Uh, and uh, it's easier for many people to give up 
and, and withdraw the candidacy, go away, forget about things, slam the door, rather than uh, explain that I'm not that bad. It's just, it's a rumor, it's a fake news, I'm good. Uh, and just see, many people choose just to go away and many good people suffer because of that. Uh, Eric, uh, so uh, in your chapter in 2014 book with uh, Martin Nix, uh, you have this beautiful typology of character assassination methods. And you uh, look at uh, name calling, you look at uh, vandalism, you look at labels being used, you, you look at memory erasing. Um, can you um, mention uh, some of the most uh, maybe uh, vicious or toxic methods or tactics that some of the attackers use that make um, targets particularly sensitive and vulnerable to those attacks? Well, plenty of examples, of course, but, but let me briefly maybe start with the less vicious but uh, very efficient and then there's in the process maybe as we will discuss uh, in the even really really vicious uh, tags but uh, uh, less vicious but uh, really really effective and maybe it's not even classical but uh, in terms of the the uh, uh, the elements but uh, look at the case of Mozart and Salieri for instance uh, Antonio Salieri great musician uh, wrote 40 uh, operas and uh, was known for his great work and his care and his charitable work in, in, in Vienna, and yet we remember him for being an assassin, a killer of, of Mozart for some reason, due to some careless uh, rumors and some plays by Russian poets, and then mu musicals and operas was staged, uh, developing those rumors. Just ask people, and vast majority of people today who know, who uh, remember the name of Antonio Salieri, they'll say, ah, that the guy, who, uh, well, killed Mozart and think Amadeus is the film. This is not a typical character attack because I don't think it was deliberately organized by somebody, but also shows that rumors are maintained uh, and supported by people who really want to be maintained. So the uh, analysis shows that uh, when we follow somebody, when we believe somebody, be it a prophet or political leader or some iconic figure, we really, if something happens to this person, we really want to find a scapegoat. Somebody must have been responsible for the death of this individual, and we easily, 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 uh, well, organize uh, efforts against that person. In this case, wonderful, young, talented, brilliant musician, Wolfgang, uh, Wolfgang Mozart, and then this, well, dark character of uh, Antonio Salieri, just questionable character, who definitely, maybe he didn't, but still he, uh, he did. Uh, uh, and that, that's one of the examples, examples it says, which was wrongfully accused, <laughs> wrongfully accused. Uh, but uh, in, among most vicious examples, we unfortunately come from authoritarian countries in which government have uh, almost everything in their power uh, to organize media, organize public opinion, organize willing uh, researchers to do and say something uh, against the person. Case of Václav Havel in, uh, in Czechoslovakia, then known as Czechoslovakia, a uh, famous writer uh, and then president of, of that country, of Czech Republic. Uh, but uh, we know today that that's just how, uh, how uh, organized and how vicious was campaign against him uh, simply because he disagreed with the governments, uh, or communist governments of Czechoslovakia was organized deliberate campaign uh, for, to destroy his reputation, diminish his, his uh, writing record. Uh, just to question his ability to write and, and judge and think. And that is one of, one of those examples. Václav Havel, I think it's a, uh, can, quite a fine example from the 20th century. Eric, uh, I know that um, CARP Lab is doing a lot of uh, work with uh, colleagues from other countries and one of the collaborations is basically uh, this this partnership with Scandology people, uh, Scandology scholars that organize Scandology conference every year in Germany. So, uh, so what is the overlap between the research and character assassination and research in public scandals and how some of this um, Research is complementary. How do those both disciplines, you know, uh, help each other understand 
uh, different use of uh, character attacks and, and, and reputational crises. There is a wonderful uh, group of uh, uh, young scholars uh, in Bamberg, Germany, who were able over these uh, five, six years gathered around them uh, quite a, uh, also productive uh, 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 group of scholars in Europe and the United States. Uh, we join them uh, enthusiastically uh, because what they do, they study scandals. And when people ask, what do you study scandals? What? Oh, we understand. A uh, scandal, public scandal, is, uh, is an earthquake. Right? Uh, it's a, it's a, a hail. It's a heavy rain. It's heavy snowfall. It's a thunderstorm that affects almost everything. And the purpose of character assassins is to create this, this, this scandal. So that in that murky waters of scandal, when logic disappears and emotions rule supreme, in those, in those environments, so easy to, to dominate, or at least, at least confuse, at least to, to stop or delay a political process, a solution of a problem, uh, or, or anything, anything else, anything else. So, uh, a, a posted messages, uh, TV reports, something being streamed, social media. Uh, the topic is is circulating uh, on and on, on and on, and this is called called public public scandal. Public scandal. Unfortunately, this year we, we could have uh, gathered in April there in Bam uh, again. Uh, uh, we we couldn't because of the because of the pandemic. Of course, we really hope that we, it will happen uh, later on, and uh, we'll do it and just we will uh, join. And we, we believe that we find a lot of uh, overlap between our some overlap between our work uh, and the work of that very productive, uh, very efficient group in, in Germany. Eric, so I know that you. you and the team just finished work. Um, you and the team just finished work on the handbook of character assassination, uh, assassination, which is the first effort of this kind. Um, it's very uh, interdisciplinary and has a lot of scholars from different disciplines looking at character assassination as a social phenomenon, as a political phenomenon, as a cultural phenomenon. Uh, but I know you are also currently working on a textbook. Uh, can you briefly talk about this project and how um, is this product is different from what you've done before? Maybe you can talk about some of the key um, elements of this uh, new textbook and who is it intended for? Uh, or maybe you can just cover some of the main topics discussed in this new uh, textbook. Certainly. Well, the, the handbook which uh, you uh, the first editor of course, uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, well, I would say just, just, I believe that's a first step in our fundamental research, it's just for research of the scholars. Uh, the handbook identifies the issue of character assassination, assassination and discusses various topics and subjects from cross-cultural uh, uh, comparative perspective, but it's, it's mostly for scholars, advanced scholarship in the subject. The textbook it has a, a little bit different audience. The textbook is written for, uh, let me put it this way, um, Yes, maybe younger audience for students. Uh, yes, those who mm, don't have enough interest or not interest, not interest at all in this subject, but want to learn. Uh, those who take this class because it's just uh, advised by their professor. Uh, those who study anthropology, sociology, communications, uh, history, psychology, political science, interested in political campaigning. So for those individuals who want to get this basic knowledge about, about character assassination. So the textbook is, is, is about that. And there we try to, to use uh, well, textbook language in which you have to define things, give examples, define things, give examples, discuss, give examples, discuss. This is just, just a particular structure is, is required for this. And we, we talk about uh, the attackers, we talk about the, the targets of attacks of victims, we discuss the audience, we discuss the context, we discuss the steps of this process, we discuss methods of character assassination. We discussed specific subjects like gender, uh, culture, religion, ethnicity. Uh, we discussed discuss, uh, media and how the media's role uh, in, in the process. So this we, we talk from the standpoint of, of, of uh, attacker, uh, the target, the audience, the context, the outcomes. 
uh, and certainly give a lot of historical examples, lots of history, lots of sociology, lots of studies in, in fields of rhetoric, uh, and definitely psychology, definitely political science. So in other words, we want to uh, somehow raise a new generation of students who would come, uh, got so enthusiastic about this, and somehow continue this research, uh, and, and also apply in their work as, as a mediators, uh, apply the work as lawyers, uh, apply the case uh, uh, knowledge, uh, yes, yes, in politics as well, learning how to defend against character attacks and how to, and also, yeah, definitely psychologists also. Uh, and one of the issues is, is bullying, online bullying, and it's a big issue, of course, national issues, issue. And so those individuals, the students who take our class, at least will get interest, uh, develop interest in this field and take other classes in which they learn about how to defend people and how to, how to help them uh, in self-protection against uh, smear campaigns against them. Uh, er Eric, uh, so, so now um, I would like to open um, uh, the room for questions. So you can post your questions here in this chat and I will be able to um, read them. Uh, so, so in, but uh, before we do that, maybe I can ask Eric one more question. So before we segue into Q and A, uh, one of your recent uh, interests was uh, this online dueling, uh, how different um, people of public status, public figures engage in online uh, smear campaigns against each other. Um, and recently, you wrote a blog post on CARP. Um, uh, website about this famous uh, Russian propaganda practitioner and the uh, sports commentator. Uh, so have you seen uh, similar examples in the United States or in, in, in other countries? And uh, so how are those cases prevalent right now? Well, uh, you mentioned about the, the duel between uh, two Russian uh, commentators, which uh, essentially, people f uh, forgot what was the subject. The subject was uh, support during the crisis, uh, the government's role in the, in the, during the pandemic. And then uh, they began calling each other names. Uh, and so names quite vicious. And uh, when I, I, I think I pointed out that uh, in those cases of emotional dueling, uh, people regress, go back to uh, ideas and thoughts which they can't control. And uh, uh, they, well, they reflect their, uh, well, their psychological status. So that's why uh, calling somebody a fool, uh, it's still, it's offensive, but uh, understandable, but uh, calling each other dork and worse names certainly, certainly requires uh, particular emotional status, emotional state, being angry, being frustrated. Uh, and I also point out how in Russia, uh, how easily those individuals uh, just switch to sexual remarks about quick remarks about each other uh, and, uh, uh, and and others uh, in the United States. Um, well, uh, well, certainly it's not a secret. Even Trump supporters, Trump supporters would say that Trump uh, brought a relatively new language. New language. Uh, he he often uses uh, name calling. Uh, he began uh, his campaign uh, and continues. Uh, Trump supporters believed that was his uh, uh, clever tactics during the uh, election season, and then he would stop. No, he continues doing this. Yeah. And in, in, in some ways, it uh, makes people less sensitive toward, okay, there we go. Trump said something, something, something else today. Well, we know he says something every day, right? Every day. Uh, and, uh, and, and in certain ways, just the, the thresholds are getting higher. People become less sensitive toward the type of, type of talk uh, online. And I don't think it's, it's a positive development because there are certain standards and certain principles that we follow, uh, principles of decency, principles of respect. And then when the standards are changed, uh, brings the whole discussion to, to a different, different level. A uh, different level, but again, I don't want to appear like old grumpy professor who talk about decency of a public discourse of 19th century. We know that's Abraham Lincoln. I just uh, have a brief, brief uh, just quote, just, uh, it's about 160 years ago, he, uh, Lincoln was called an idiot, a buffoon, a weak, dishonest, uh, well, uh, silly, making silly remarks, uh, probably, probably person has problems with syntax and so forth. Abraham Lincoln was attacked so viciously, probably 
Uh, it's uh, difficult to match in 19th century, probably, but it was 160 60 years ago. Years ago. Uh, but uh, those dueling is not new. Uh, we did this since kindergarten. <laughs> I do remember my battles in the kindergarten when I'm five and my opponents are five-year-olds and you call each, call each other names many times, back and forth, back and forth. Um, I don't think it's, it's, a, it's a good development for uh, today's political discourse, but it become more and more common because of the media, because of social networks, because of multiplication, and because of echo chambers. Supporters will definitely will, will and opponents will definitely uh, sometimes blow out of proportion. proportion. Um, um, Eric, uh, so, and, uh, so one question uh, I have before I read the, um, the comments here. Uh, so, well, well, that's actually, it's a comment. So I, I remember uh, when um, uh, Lincoln was accused of being, you know, uh, double-faced, he responded, if I had another face, do you think I would wear this one? So, and he was not uh, known for being a necessarily, you know, good-looking man, uh, but uh, he, he took a lot of those character attacks with humor. So, um, so we have several comments from our colleagues overseas. So the first one is uh, coming from our uh, friend from India, uh, Kanval Preet, and she's asking whether you think uh, character assassination has become big business. And uh, so who capitalizes on character attacks? Who has a chance to monetize it, maybe? Well, Certainly, it's uh, in my 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 uh, humble opinion. It is it's 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 it is becoming a, a bigger business to me uh, to uh, plan an attack, to organize it, uh, and make it in a clever way. It takes less resource than twenty years ago. Basically, you can have few trolls and few social bots with a knowledge of foreign language or without that. We can they can have translators, and there you go. You have created a fake fake story. That's just something which, which we were warning about since many years ago, and this is what we know that can happen today, can happen. Just little funding and, and this can, can be done, can be done. And uh, there, there are uh, companies and there are government institutions, I know in foreign countries, we know this is to ex exactly do this, well, this thing. Uh, the goal is not necessarily character assassination, but the goal is to create confusion, uh, create uh, anger, uh, send the wrong messages and uh, direct attention to 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 other issues. Uh, yes. Uh, however, defenses against character attacks also could be. I wouldn't say business, but it's just something which will require money. I believe that uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, stock uh, depends on many uh, price of value of stock depends on many factors, right? Uh, and there are, but basically, it's psychology, human psychology. If uh, uh, just uh, as an investor, for example, just for the sake of my imagination, I know this, uh, this CEO and that CEO have questionable reputation because of these reports. And I trust these reports. Will I retain their stock? Maybe, but maybe I will, I'll be willing to, to dump it because of uh, uh, my perception that, well, these individuals with that character traits are not really, really trustworthy. And uh, certainly CEOs, uh, should understand that uh, their public image also also matters, and they do. They do. They always build their image. Always, they have they have public relations officers. They have whole teams who defend their reputation, and including lawyers. And I believe some mediators and psychologists who are there. Who are there. But this is this is indeed uh, could be could be, and it is it is uh, uh, well the profession for to 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 me. But certainly to, to uh, give an answer to the question about uh, uh, business, yes, character attacks could be a big business. It's a, it's a dirty business. Dirty money are involved there, but uh, it's, it's relatively easy to do and relatively inexpensive these days, relatively inexpensive. Okay, I would like to accommodate a few more um, colleagues with their questions. So Svetlana Stephenson, our friend from the United Kingdom, uh, is asking whether character assassination can be equated with exclusionary shaming. And obviously shaming research uh, has a lot of, um, has a lot of interesting examples, especially cross cultural uh, examples. Maybe you can just comment on that. True. Uh, I know true. Svetlana Stephenson. Uh, some, uh, 
studies uh, public shaming in Soviet Union, so that's why she was interested in this topic and your perspective on this. Some of my students uh, in the past and today uh, come with this assumption that uh, character association is uh, always about uh, fake, uh, something untrue, something based on rumors is not true, and therefore this is what we deal with. No. Uh, quite often character assassination is about something people have done, but it's, it's about exaggeration, it's about focus, it's about emphasis, emphasis. And shaming, and by the way, it's, uh, yes, the issue which we can discuss for hours, but uh, this is an instrument, instrument of politics. Many international organizations uh, fighting for good cause use shaming to apply pressure on governments, uh, especially in, in reference to human rights. And some governments pay attention, pay attention uh, and negotiate, or at least do something maybe behind the scenes, but to, to, to uh, respond, and often in, in, a, good, in a good way. Uh, and so my, my point is that to say, well, shaming uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, always uh, great policy, always negative, uh, in, I think, don't think nobody is, uh, I don't think uh, is anybody saying this, right? Uh, but uh, character assassination, uh, dis despite the negative uh, context of this term, can be, can be referred to, to uh, those uh, methods in which we exaggerate or we emphasize all over again uh, a person's uh, well, uh, misdeeds or misjudgments or mistakes. Or, or uh, well, uh, immoral acts in the past, policies or acts in the past. So there, there's definitely overlap between between these, these two concepts. Thank you. Uh, so um, I'm very pleased to see we have uh, a lot of distinguished uh, scholars joining us today. One of them is uh, Amy Cuddy, who is a very uh, famous American psychologist uh, with the best-selling books, so we are very pleased to get uh, attention from our friends and uh, colleagues from all over the world, so thanks for joining us. So uh, one question is coming from our dear friend uh, Martin X from uh, University of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, so he was wondering if, uh, so about character assassination as a discipline, why did it take so long to for character assassination uh, to appear on, on the radar, uh, on academic radar, because uh, he sees a lot of uh, similar uh, things happening with the uh, other academic studies like image building, brand building, and since you mentioned public image and public character as one of the main, uh, main areas of research. So why do you think it uh, took so long for CA to appear um, you know, in academic research? Several reasons I'd mentioned maybe a couple. One, uh, I quote my uh, late mentor from Michigan State, Vladimir Schlappentok, famous sociologist, who told me that, so, well, Eric, um, in science, uh, in zoology, it's so nice to study bears and foxes and cute bunnies. Uh, they're so nice, they're so cute, they're so warm, they're so soft. But who wants to study snakes uh, and so those uh, worms? But somebody got to study them. And if you're a true scientist, you have to study uh, things that exist, exist, even though maybe they sound unpleasant. We heard, search, I agree, we heard a lot uh, from people saying, well, uh, the term character assassination is a little bit just off-putting. Just, just want you say it's, uh, well, character insults, sort of assassination, sort of a, doesn't sound right. And we, we heard and we understand the concerns, but we decided to just to stick to the point. And Martin asked the question, uh, and I think I answered, I answered because it's considered was considered to be maybe too unpleasant and too obvious, and so not necessarily about good things in in, in history and in our life. The second reason, Martin himself, he was hiding in the shadows of working on character assassination, Roman Empire. He was not really uh, uh, well, uh, just contacting me. Just uh, he, he saw me in, in Paris in the uh, program of, of a conference, and he wrote me saying, "Well, where have you been?" So, well, uh, Dido, I can say the same thing about you. And then two, two years later, Martin organized first conference in Heidelberg, Germany. 
uh, on character assassination. It was sort of a first step in that direction. It's, it's yes, it's a lack of uh, willpower and lack of good scholars. And Martin was, uh, well, was one among the first who well, makes, uh, took some important steps. And you, well, Professor, you uh, took other steps. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we have more questions. Uh, one is from Anton Guminitsky from Moscow. He uh, is asking uh, you about the, the roots of character assassination research. And uh, he says, well, it's such a thought, thought, uh, well thought out empirical theory and such a good, such a good uh, framework. Um, on whose shoulders do you stand in terms of, um, in terms of science and scientific research? <laughs> we hope we use many shoulders and in our small group, which is uh, small and large, but just uh, just briefly mentioned, we have a historian uh, who states uh, some roots and historical truths. We have a specialist in, in rhetorics. She's not here today. She's busy, but she is the one who gives this, this, this uh, ideas about rhetorics. We have sociologists uh, and, and uh, well, specialists in uh, public policy. Uh, like uh, you and yours truly is, uh, is a political psychologist, a political science and psychology together com combined. Uh, yes, uh, I would say we may appear eclectic because we try to embrace uh, every research um, and uh, uh, move in different directions, be cross-disciplinary, but maybe it's our first uh, phase. And then obviously we are not really really into psychoanalysis or uh, any other dynamic theory. Obviously, just we don't have enough skills to be cognitive psychologists. Obviously, we are not just, uh, well, uh, behaviorists and, and, and uh, uh, using those uh, concepts. And, and uh, obviously, we're not in position of uh, political conservatism, liberalism. We try to embrace and see and uh, invite as many uh, points of view as possible. As possible. Uh, Probably, uh, probably one of the one of the approaches you know, which makes us close to cognitive psychology is that as we deal with images, and images are socially constructed, and that that's why we we can uh, uh, invite uh, uh, colleagues from political science, psychology, uh, computer science, uh, public policy images in communication studies because we talk about public policy and public images based on public policy. Thank you. Uh, question from Mustafa Latif, uh, and he, his question is more specific about the difference between character assassination research and uh, scandals. So how do you differentiate uh, conceptually between scandals and character assassination? And you mentioned that character assassination basically uh, are uh, strategic efforts to trigger scandals, right? Um, so, but what is the actual role of character assassination in scandals as public events? Uh, two factors are important. Uh, at this moment, speaking hypothetically, hypothetically, the host can say something really derogatory about me, saying that I am, uh, uh, well, uh, I don't wash my hands during this, this, this crisis, and that therefore, and so. But I don't think people will pay attention to this, or maybe will pay attention, but will ignore, uh, and it doesn't really matter. It's, it's just, it, there's no, no scandal. Uh, two things must happen uh, for a, a character attack uh, uh, cause a scandal. One is the credibility of the attack. Uh, if a person has a direct knowledge about something, or a person has been trustworthy in the past, or a person has social, uh, uh, quite quite reputable social position in a society or community. It's very very important fact. Very important fact. Uh, if say just to, uh, not disrespect to my students, if a student says something, it's one thing. If a dean of the school says the same thing, it's well people pay more attention to this, right? Although although I believe both opinions are valid, but we understand how social power works in our society in every society. But second uh, is, is um, a public threshold. To, to become a scandal, a character assassination is supposed, supposed to touch on a subject which, uh, is, is the, uh, to which society is sensitive. sensitive. Uh, like, Sergey, you, you talk a lot about this and wrote about this, that uh, issue of marriage, being married, uh, uh, family status was extremely important in politics in um, the 1950s. And then things began to change. 
uh, and then affairs of present prime ministers, second marriages and divorces. It became not issue today to become a scandal to say that, well, this candidate has been divorced twice, not a big deal. And as people joke in France, actually, it's a, it's a good thing, right? Uh, well, of course, it's stereotypical perception of French politics. Of course it is. We don't think this way, right? But, but it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. So, so uh, the threshold has, has, has changed for that. So uh, a credible source uh, of information and then public sensitivity to this issue. Both together, they contribute to, to, to a scandal. Uh, the credibility is a cultural issue. It's a situational issue. And public thresholds are uh, cultural issues. And things in India, for instance, or South Korea or China today may appear different uh, compared to things in the United States, certain subject and issues referring to sexual behavior, mental illness. I notice how easy in Russia people begin to insult each other using mental illness terms, like a retardation, schizophrenia, or something like an insult. Oh, you have symptoms of schizophrenia, boom. Yes. And it's, it's considered to be, yeah, this is what, what people do. And it's a stigma of mental illness. So the perception of mental illness in US and Russia may be similar in many ways, in many ways quite, quite different, quite different. And that allows scandals to, to grow. Uh, any reference, say yes, any politician you have to say today, say something about mental illness or attach label saying that, oh, well, this person has a, as hypothetically speaking, uh, this center has a Tourette syndrome or something. Probably this person who said probably will, will resign tomorrow for this, basically, basically because of the uh, sensitivity uh, to the issue of mental illness. Every country has own thresholds of public sensitivity, and that's why different conditions for, for scandals. Okay, Eric, we can uh, probably accommodate one more question. And uh, the, the last question uh, is uh, whether you see any room for sociologists within character assassination uh, research, because it looks like um, we have psychologists, we have rhetoricians, we have communication scholars, we have uh, historians. Uh, what about sociologists and how can sociologists contribute to the uh, development uh, of this field? We need sociologists desperately. We need more sociologists uh, in, in, uh, in, in our group, of course. And sociologists deal with, uh, well, they're wonderful descriptors of cases. And sociologists also deal with the big numbers, big numbers. Uh, and sociologists know how to crunch those big numbers. This is what we need. Uh, we need it desperately, need it today, need it now. So anyone who says, I have knowledge in sociology and I want to just see what I can do, uh, welcome. Welcome. Certainly, we'll be eager to embrace, uh, help, uh, and learn from, from, from those scholars, those colleagues who uh, can, can bring us uh, close to the, to the field of sociology. Uh, Eric, uh, so uh, to conclude, uh, could you uh, maybe recommend um, some, uh, some readings or some, uh, some books? for us to learn more about uh, the subject matter. And while I'm um, asking you this, uh, I would like to ask one more question coming from uh, Emmy. Uh, so she says, well, targets of character assassination are shattered. So the pain of losing community and identity actually trumps most types of physical pain. It shatters people with objectively worse than acute physical trauma in several ways. And uh, so there is no model for recuperation, no cast or splint, no prescription drugs. So we must focus on training bystanders to recognize character assassination campaigns. Um, so can you uh, also uh, maybe um, briefly tell us about your thoughts on how we can train bystanders to not to be exploited by character assassins? Well, uh Character assassins uh, really count on uh, on uh, uh, us being fools, uh, useful fools, useful idiots. I use this bad term, sorry for this, but uh, we know this useful idiot. That's a person who uh, maybe has some some Don't knowledge you, about something. Yes, <laughs> in, in, so, in some ways. Uh, maybe I give a predictable answer. Just only only knowledge, knowledge and. As always, we say that it's so easy for us to be within our echo chamber. Uh, maybe, once again, sounds maybe too uh, 
uh, impossible. But those who read only New York Times, please open at least once a week Wall Street Journal and vice versa, vice versa. Uh, how can you do this? Some of my colleagues say, well, that's, we, we should do it. We should do it. See what, what's happening. Hear the argument. Understand the argument. We all have relatives, I believe all of us, who we love dearly, but we stop talking to them because of politics. Because of politics. We invite them sometimes, we discuss things of the day, but not, not politics, because we have different views about this. And maybe, maybe it's, it's certain, it's, we're certain blessed because this political polarization that today exists in many parts of the world, uh, it's, it's good for us because we, we, we can start finally uh, saying enough is enough, let's discuss, let's talk, and let's educate each other. So that's why I believe uh, as educators, educator, we need to, to educate ourselves and help up other people uh, to learn more. And in terms of books, uh, why don't we, we post at least uh, just uh, again, some of those things, we, we, books we recommend. And uh, I think that the uh, easiest thing to do is just to read uh, our uh, blog on, on CARP uh, website. Uh, and so we have uh, dozens of postings there for a couple of years already and uh, different subjects. Uh, and this is again good good thing uh, to start and maybe we'll just will uh, yes uh, using your your opinion maybe we'll, we'll post some of uh, our writings maybe, maybe uh, segments of our papers of, uh, which which we can simply uh, prepare design and post on our site and also don't forget we have a site on Facebook just character assassination Facebook uh, in which we sometimes duplicate things from our site sometimes we post something 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 else right right there uh, yeah, uh, so I think it's a good way to, to mention some of our uh, recent uh, research. So don't forget to check out our handbook, uh, Character Assassination and Reputation Management. It's, it's a handbook by Rutledge. Uh, also, Character Assassination Throughout the Ages, uh, uh, edited by Eric Shirai and uh, Martin X. Uh, so, and obviously, uh, lots of our individual um, chapters articles and manuscripts that are um, in, in, in development right now. So Eric, I would like to thank you for this conversation. It was really insightful and we would like to wish you good luck with your research. We look forward to seeing your textbook uh, by the end of the year and we will um, uh, we, we hope for uh, next meeting uh, sometime uh, in the fall, maybe for your updates uh, about the uh, ongoing the presidential election. Certain, oh, certain, certain. And we have a meeting on Friday with, uh, with Martin X. In fact, he's in Amsterdam and he'll be our next guest. Right. Thank you, Eric. Thank you.